Okay, same setting, nothing's changed as far as I know, unless it's all directly gone back to something else. Oh. Yeah, so it's all been one big massive conspiracy over in the West. I mean, for someone, you know, some kid to actually uh, have goons on his doorstep the very next day, someone in his area must have contacted Aluminium and he must have contacted the authorities. I would have thought, oh, he's only in his early teenage years, I think it was. So the uh, anecdotal story goes, but I still remember that story. Well, um, I mean, the person who was involved definitely knows all about it. Maybe they, were, they can confirm the story. Maybe there are other stories out there. But, uh, yeah. And I think you know, the old Stuart McPherson has blotted his copy book because I think he's got himself in either unintentionally or intentionally involved in the conspiracy. So, uh, and he's also embroiled himself in another one, the uh, Nepenthes Attenborough one. So. But we'll be talking about more about that later on in the season. So, uh, yeah, anyway, I'll just come out to the, uh, there'll be nothing apart from some of these, uh, the odd witty eye, the odd hookery eye relation. There'll be no pigs until, um, you know, October, November, December, basically. That's why I'm suggesting it's either, it, you know, it's got the flower stalk, structural theme of pygmia, but with slight differences in the flower. It's got the basal rosette, uh, Structural theme of a occidentalis come, you know, all those other relations. So, you know, it's not one thing or the other, so it's either probably a, a distant hybrid uh, or um, some sort of bit crossroads evolution has been going on. And as you can see, there's absolute oh, <laughs> my coin from last, last season still there. I must have again forgotten to. Uh, Oh, well, maybe we'll leave it there to see if there's any effect of the nickel from the coin. Um, yeah, but as you can see, there's absolutely no pegs. They all grow back from seed, no jemmy, at least in the natural conditions here. Whether they can produce jemmy, I don't know. Whether it's been a distant hybrid, and therefore it somehow cancelled out the jemmy production. Maybe that also means that... Um, it can be uh, fine, uh, fine fodder for hybridization with the glid. So take this, cross it with the glid, and it might actually work. So you'll get a, um, a glid that, well, probably an interesting hybrid that doesn't produce jemmy, or maybe you'll get an interesting hybrid that has the characteristics of the glid, the coloration of this, but it also produces jemmy. You don't know. That's why it's worth trying to get this one into uh, cultivation, but it's a real bugger. As I said, uh, it's just so hard, you know. It's got a win. It's got a window the size of a gnat's ass, you know. Yeah. Anyway, it's not worth going down there. I don't think, fellas. Oh, we'll just go down to this pan, and that will be it, I think. And uh, yeah. Uh, where is the pan? Oh, here it is. Just walked right past it. Now I can't see anything growing up on that, so uh, you can see it's nice and damp and wet and everything, so it looks a bit like some of my pots. So, yeah, I think we're going to get there, fellas. It's, uh, as I said, it's cracking copper, I reckon. Once they crack copper, it's all over Red Rover. I think uh, that's everything. Everything's going to settle down, and everything's going to fit in with the, the the grand horticultural scheme of things. Oh, well, the way it does in the wild, naturally, anyway. Yeah. Okay, well that's over and out. I think I don't want to waste film because I might want to film the uh, the blockage up there. They probably already packed up or something. But I'll keep the camera going and see if I can. Okay, just so you know the efforts I've made today. Okay, over and out. Gotta go home and cook a roast now. See ya. <laughs>